Hey guys, it's your favorite medical channel, Medicosis Perfectionalis, resuming our discussion on pulmonology. Today we have a crazy medical mnemonic about granulomatosis with polyangiitis. So let's get started. First, let me answer the case 9 from the previous video, and it has two questions. A 34-year-old Norwegian man comes in complaining of recurrent episodes of runny nose, hemoptysis, nasal discharge, and blood in the urine. Physical exam was significant for a saddle deformity. The patient felt pain when you pressed your finger against his facial bones. Strawberry gingivitis was noted, but palpable perpia was absent. Urinalysis revealed RBCs in the urine. A biopsy of a blood vessel revealed muscular artery vasculitis. A renal biopsy revealed crescentric glomerulonephritis. You started the treatment with the drug of choice. Four weeks later, the patient complained of frequency, urgency, burning, and dysuria, and even hematuria. There was a low-grade fever and suprapubic tenderness. Urine cytology revealed cells. Number one, what was the name of the drug that you prescribed? Ethambutol, rifampin, hydralazine, isoniazid, cyclophosphamide, bleomycin, rituximab, adalimumab, or methotrexate. Now pause. Okay, let's digest that. Norwegian, so Northern Europe, hemoptysis and hematuria. Okay. Saddle nose deformity. Woo. Pain when you press on the facial bones. This is the pain of sinusitis. Also, the patient may have pain when he leans forward and gets his head down because of the pressure and it's called gravity, baby. Strawberry gingivitis, okay. No palpable purpura. You have red blood cells in the urine, okay. The biopsy revealed muscular artery vasculitis. It's like an, kind of a systemic or an autoimmune disease, okay. Renal biopsy revealed crescentric glomerulonephritis. You started the treatment, and then four weeks later, the patient complained of frequency, urgency, burning, dysuria, and hematuria. Low-grade fever and suprapubic tenderness equals cystitis. Why not pyelonephritis? Pyelonephritis usually has high-grade fever, and it's not suprapubic, it's in the renal angle. Costophrenic angle tenderness. Urine cytology revealed cell, this is cystitis. So, what was the name of the drug that you prescribed that led to cystitis with hematuria, aka hemorrhagic cystitis, and the answer is cyclophosphamide. So, this patient has a disease called granulomatosis with polyangiitis, formerly known as Wegener or Wegener's. This granulomatosis with polyangiitis will affect three main things. Nose or nose and pharynx. And next is the lung. That's why he has hemoptysis. And also kidneys. That's why he ha is having hematuria as well as crescentric glomerulonephritis. And this is GWP, granulomatosis with polyangiitis. This can confuse you with rheumatoid arthritis. If it was rheumatoid arthritis, the answer would have been methotrexate. And methotrexate does not, does not lead to hemorrhagic cystitis. Like, it's very rare to see that. So this is granulomatosis with polyangiitis. The remit of choice is cyclophosphamide, which can lead to hemorrhagic cystitis. Please don't forget the word strawberry gingivitis is key to diagnose. GWP. When you see strawberry gingivitis on your exam, it's going to be a granulomatosis with polyangiitis. Take it to the bank. Next question. Which of the following would have prevented this complication? IVIG, IV fluid and allopurinol, N-acetylcysteine, mesna, amifostin, dextrazoxan, or leucovorin? Now pause. Now let's digest that. IVIG is possible. Yes, that's a good treatment option to prevent hemorrhagic cystitis, but it's not the correct answer here. You gotta focus on the common things or the most significant things. IVIG and allopurinol is used to prevent tumor lysis syndrome. N-acetylcysteine is a mucolytic that can be used in cystic fibrosis, and it can also be used in treatment of acetaminophen toxicity. Mesna is the correct answer here. Mesna decreases acrolein. Acrolein causes hemorrhagic cystitis. So when you decrease acrolein, you decrease hemorrhagic cystitis. Mesna also increases cysteine excretion. Mesna is also known as sodium to mercaptoethane sulfonate. Next, amifostin is used to prevent cisplatin toxicity and dextrazoxan, which starts with a D, 
is used to prevent doxorubicin toxicity. G is leucovorin or folinic acid. It's also known as leucovorin rescue to rescue from the toxicity of methotrexate. Why? Because methotrexate inhibits the dihydrofolate reductase. It's the C mnemonic. Granulomatosis with polyangiitis, also known as Wigner's. This is the previous name. We're just gonna call it Wigner's to remember the C. The C mnemonic. Caucasians, especially Northern Europeans. Sex congruent. There is no such thing. I just made it up. It means male and female have the same risk or the same incidence. It affects the nasopharynx, lungs, and kidney. And this is like a C. If you look at this, look at this. It's like a C, man. This is a C. So I causes scleritis and conjunctivitis. Nose, rhinitis, ulcers, and discharge. Sinus, sinusitis. Lung, hemoptysis, which is coughing of blood. Cavitary lesions. In the kidney, you will have rapidly progressive, also as crescentric glomerulonephritis, leading to chronic kidney disease. It can involve the ear, it can involve the gum, causing strawberry gingivitis. Strawberry gingivitis. Um, I'm Egyptian, so you get it. Diagnosis. C. Anka. And as you know, C is the third letter in the alphabet. That's why it's called antiproteinase 3, because this is the third number. Third letter with third number. Treatment. Cyclophosphamide. But beware, it can cause hemorrhagic cystitis. CD20 antagonist, rituximab, monoclonal antibody against CD20, positive B lymphocytes, and corticosteroids. This is everything in the world you need to know about granulomatosis with polyangiitis. The only person that knows more than you is one that has PhD in pediatrics or nephrology or whatever. Please be careful because granulomatosis with polyangiitis is often misdiagnosed as rheumatoid arthritis because the GPA has C anca, so it confuses the doctors with rheumatoid that has the anti-CCP. Okay. If you're struggling to memorize Legionella, Mycoplasma, Pseudomonas, Rhinovirus, Staph and Streptin, E. coli, check out this website called Picmonic, Picture Mnemonics for medical stuff. See the link in the description below. They are not a sponsor of this video. If you love these videos, I have a playlist called Medical Mnemonics and I have another playlist called Medical Jokes. Let's take your medical education to the next level. Causes of simultaneous hemoptysis and hematuria. In the same patient at the same time. Are you ready? Good pasture syndrome or anti-glomerular basement membrane. Be because you have those O2 antibodies in your alveoli and those O2 antibodies in your glomeruli, leading to hemoptysis and hematuria respectively. Also granulomatosis with polyangiitis. Remember the C mnemonic? We involve the rhino, the rhinosinusitis, so nasopharynx, then the lungs, and then the kidneys. In the lung, it's gonna cause hemoptysis. In the kidney, it's gonna cause hematuria. DIC, bleeding from every orifice. Secondary TB, it can involve every organ or any organ. Systemic lupus, because when you're wondering, it's lupus. It's a complicated disease and it causes symptoms systemically. Rheumatoid arthritis, why? Because it has CHF and CHF can engorge those pulmonary vessels leading to hemoptysis. And this rheumatoid arthritis can lead to glomerulonephritis as well. IgA nephropathy, which starts as an upper respiratory tract infection, and then soon, maybe at the same time, or just like two days after, you get microscopic hematuria. Lung cancer metastasizing to the kidney, renal cell carcinoma metastasizing to the lung. Now let's have a case, number 10, which has six questions, so this is only the first. So where are the previous nine cases? Where are they? In my playlist called Pulmonology in my channel. So let's go ahead. 41-year-old homeless man comes to your office complaining of difficulty swallowing. The condition started four days ago when he noticed that swallowing has become painful. He feels a mess in his mouth and neck. He admits smoking one pack a day of cigarettes for 25 years and drinks alcohol every night. Vital signs are significant for fever and mild tachycardia. On general physical exam, the patient looks disheveled, smells bad, has rotten teeth, and 
the cigarette smoking stigmata are obvious, such as discoloration of the teeth, discoloration of the fingertips, the cigarette smell, etc. On examination of the head and neck, you notice circumoral redness, as well as a firm, tender, bilaterally symmetric in duration of the submandibular space. There is also crepitus on the lower mandible, and the patient is drooling. Number one, what's the most likely diagnosis? Two, which of the following are triggers that started this condition? So trigger or triggers. Is it HIV, smoking, a congenital defect, a Coxsackie virus, etc., etc.? Three, what is the most likely causative organism? Four, what is the underlying pathology? Five, what is the most common cause of death from this condition? And six, what is the next best step in management? Reassurance, psych referral, obtain a court order, incision range antibiotics, heart antiviral therapy, mechanical ventilation only, oxygen mask or continuous positive airway pressure. Please let me know what you think. The answers are in the comment section. The correct answers are going to be published in the next video in this great playlist called Pulmonology in my channel. Just Google Medicosis Pulmonology Playlist and you will find it. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and join the tribe. Hit the bell to get notified. Follow me on Facebook. I have more than 100 cases there. And please support this channel on Patreon.com. Guys, I really need your support. Even $1 makes a difference. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfect Snails, where medicine makes perfect sense. Until next time.